Hello all of you little demons, Jules here for WhatCulture.com, back again with another episode of the awesomely named and awfully hosted Choose Your Own Adventure, the weekly medieval themed format where I, the crown jewels of WhatCulture.com, take a list chosen by you, yes, you the person who has a super special Live and Let's Dice channel update that's going to be at the end of the video, don't worry, I won't waste too much of your time with my usual preamble mumble jumble that is my introductions but yes stay tuned to the end of the video because there is something very very special happening yes you get to decide what list i dole out to you each and every week and this week we have none other to thank than i'm just going to tune up the drum trumpets or the drumpets of they have now been known i don't actually know who suggested this <laughs> probably should have had that up on my screen ironically I'm stopping myself before I've started, which is actually today's topic. So that's worked out quite well. <laughs> James will probably put the name up right now. Thank you very much for your suggestion. So sometimes when you're playing a video games, it can feel that the action only really kicks into gear come the very final part of the game, and as such things end just at the point in which you feel like they're just getting started. Other times, exceptional ideas can just fall afoul of bad release windows, meaning that the series they represented are buried before they've even had a chance to bloom, and in other, even more unfortunate examples, titles can be killed off or cancelled before even getting to market. These are the tales of the unloved, these are the tales of the underappreciated, and these are eight videos games that ended before they even got started. So let's take a look at them as I'm Jules and this is WhatCulture.com. Say hi to me here on the live chat and put your suggestions for next week's episode down in the comment section below. But with that in mind, let's get on with that list, shall we? <laughs> Number 8. Vanquish. Oh, what's that? Yes, it's time for Jules to wheel out his little soapbox car thing because it's got wheels apparently and stand on top of it to proclaim, WHERE IS VANQUISH 2? WHERE IS VANQUISH 2? Yeah, it's that time again. Because seriously, this game demanded and deserved more. Now, while the story might be a good old slice of B-movie ham, delicious. The action tied things together so well that it fits like a well-tailored suit. Delicious. Not wearing a suit, but you get, the, you get the idea. And with the late game reveal that your own government was in on the whole coup of the solar sun space station turned death laser, well, that's something that hypes up the player for a showdown for the ages. So who's first then, the rascally Russian leader Viktor? Or is Elizabeth Winters, the US president, about to get her teeth booted down her throat? Either way, you're scooting towards the end of this game at such speed that you resemble a coked up greyhound with worms, and it's here that the action, well, it's put down with a brick. After battling a pair of souped up mech suits, it's revealed that Victor has already left the space station and Winters has just shot herself rather than have the world find out about her treason. Oh, right. Okay, so uh, what do you get then? Nothing. You just sliding straight into the end credits because you've had your final boss battle and it was against the two mech suits. Cool. We're just going to ignore the very dour tone that's underlying this very kind of cheery end message. They're all like, yay, we saved the day. It's like, no, you haven't. No, you haven't at all. There's a resource war waiting for you when you crash land back on terra firma. That is an issue that I want to see in a sequel. Where is Vanquish 2? Number 7. The Force Unleashed 2 As much as we all enjoyed Star Wars The Force Unleashed 2 when it came to its action, that's pretty good. When it came to its story, or moreover its content, the backbone of this game was broken over its knee like Bane and Batman. There's a comic reference in my gaming soup. I love it. It's like a crunchy little crouton. <laughs> I say this because it only lasted four or five bloody hours, which is pretty insulting considering the full price tag that came with this game, let alone that it flies in the face of the two things that all sequels should strive to be, aka bigger and better. Honestly, things feel so phoned in that you could replace half the alien forms in this game from the Star Wars universe with that roving ball bag known as E.T. and things would fit better. Because, and brace yourself, James, you'll be experiencing a grand total of four areas. Ooh, two of which are on the same planet. And that's what this game does to you. And yet, what hurts the most about this title is that this offshoot series contains so much potential to be great. The act of exploring the dark side, working for and then against the Empire, and indulging in levels of violence not really seen in Star Wars video games since, was something that could have been mined for several years had the devs actually bothered to put more into the game than the leftovers to the first with some fan fiction sprinkled on top. It was a series that was destined for greatness, but unfortunately fell to the dark side. Don't know what voice I'm doing today. Don't know what, what accent. You tell me what accent am I doing? Number six, Star Wars Battlefront 3. <laughs> now I know what you're going to be saying, James, that you're going to be saying, oh, Jules, why are you putting on another entry from the same franchise? Surely you're meant to only have one franchise per list. But guess what? Oh, what's this? Oh, 
It's evil. It's oh, it's evil finger temple of doom. Off, off. Yeah, that's right. I'm saying boo to a goose and you too, my friend, because more people need to know about the sheer tragedy that was the original Star Wars Battlefront 3. Yeah, that's right. We're not lamenting the fact that EA won't get another chance to botch their way through another Star Wars title, but instead we're looking back at a time when plucky developer Free Radical was working on a sequel to the much-loved series after taking up the reins following Pandemic Studios, and how, despite being, according to sources, 99% complete, never got a chance to release this game. Now, the title was set to have huge changes to the core experience, with players able to engage in space battles and then ride down to the planet's surface to continue the fighting on foot seamlessly, which obviously at the time would have pushed consoles to their limit. It was also set to have a single player mode that focused on two clones, one of which defects and joins the rebellion, and the other staying loyal to the Empire after Order 66. As you can tell, there was a lot going for this title. However, thanks to LucasArts changing management three times across this project, the disaster that was Free Radicals Haze, and the fact that budgets were slashed and deadlines pushed forward meant that Star Wars Battlefront 3 was stuttering hard. This, coupled with withheld payments from LucasArts, meant that soon Free Radical had no resources to put into the game, all of which led to the development studio closing and LucasArts refusing to put out the game. Thankfully though, you can find a ton of footage of what might have been online because the devs just leaked everything they possibly could, which is great. Now, there's a weird thing as well that a lot of people saying that a lot of the assets from this game got used in the PSP version. Uh, like, like a spin-off game that came afterwards, there was actually one of the lead developers when I was doing research for this actually said, no, that's not the case. They used some assets in the sequel to that offshoot game for the PSP, but the original one didn't have it. So there's no real way to say that the Star Wars Battlefront 3 experience that we should have got is out there in the public. But still, we were so close. 99% close. That's a real shame. Number five, Halo 2. You mind telling me what you're doing on that ship, Master Chief, sir? finishing the fight. Oh, that sounds so cool. <laughs> go, on, go, on. go on then, go on, don't, don't let me stop you. Off you go, off you go. Well, what, what are you waiting for? Go on, off you go. I'm waiting until next year until the sequel drops. Oh, you mother- Yes, this was the cry heard all around the world when the Chief of Beef decided to sting fans with a sequel that we kind of all knew was coming deep down, but was delivered in such a horrendous manner in the form of Halo 2. Here, after waiting a fair old while for the sequel itself, we were dragged through a rather confusing mess filled with arbiters and grave mines, only to be told that the real action wouldn't be starting until Halo 3. Once word got out about this, it's fair to say that the hype train was significantly derailed, and for many, it felt like a slap in the face to be delivered with a, let's just let these wheels spin narrative in order to drag out the series. Of note, very little happens on this journey, and if you're being truly honest with yourself, you could skip right to Halo 3 and still piece together what's going on within minutes. Thankfully, Halo 3 more than delivered on the single-player front, but for a time, it definitely felt like the series was sinking under its own expectations. Number 4. Titanfall 2 Now, as we have said many, many times before here on What Culture, please, if you haven't already, play Titanfall 2. Also like and subscribe, I guess. As this game is quite possibly one of the most underappreciated hidden gems of the last generation. And it's such a shame seeing as the series was just finding its footing, only to get its legs kicked out from underneath it here. The original Titanfall game presented a brilliant concept of big mech battles amidst massed firefights, and coupled this with a brilliantly engaging parkour system that allowed for liquid quick gameplay. However, when it came to its narrative, it was a bit on the light side. Stories played out on the same maps that you'd played in multiplayer, player over and over, and in all honesty, the creatures that you could spy off in the distance were actually more interesting than the military guff you were being forced to inhale. <sniffs> Tom Clancy. Then along came Titanfall 2, smashing into the ground and tearing up the script of the original while also delivering a truly heartfelt and action-packed narrative of a man and his mech who take on all odds and exchange barbed remarks along the way. This was a breath of fresh air not only for the series, but the entire sci-fi genre at the time that was rather in danger of disappearing up its own ass. and so of course with all of this positivity, it died a commercial death. Cool. This was the game Titanfall 1 needed to be, but thanks to a decline in interest and a terrible release window of the sequel, Titanfall as a franchise is now gathering rust down the scrapyard. Number 3. The Order 1886 Okay, so Jazz, I've actually got a game pitch for you. I know that I usually speak to James, but let's face it, you're the real brains of this operation. Oh yeah, betray me like that. Well, Jazz isn't here, so you're going to have to talk to me. So how about a video game where you play a group of secret monster hunters looking to defend humanity using high-tech weapons, and it's set in Victorian England? 
It sounds pretty sweet, right? You can stop nodding now, by the way. I, we've already made our point. Well, how about you take that idea and all of the cool set pieces that it could create and the interesting take on steampunk gadgets and weapons you could see and smush it all down to a four-hour experience? What's that? Do you want more time in this interesting world and the supposedly immortal characters that you're playing as? Well, tough. Four hours is all you get and you best be bloody happy with that meager amount because we're not going to support the game with DLC or a sequel. Welcome, my friends, to the world of the Order 1886. The game that so many wanted to be so much more than what we got. Just as the wheels started spinning at full speed, they came off entirely as the game crashed to the credits around four hours in. And remember, this is just when the player has finally got to fight against some of the werewolves promised in the early stages of the title. It's a game that felt like a short story instead of a movie, and its desperate scrabble to a close made the order look like a glorified and very expensive tech demo, albeit one that we desperately wanted to see more of. Number two, Deus Ex Mankind Divided. So, recently I've been watching a lot of H Bomber Guy's videos. I love the fact that he has these really long form essays and they're so well thought out and I kind of like, even when they're about games that I love and he's ripping them to pieces, I'm like, damn, I actually, <laughs> I've, I've learned something from this experience. Um, but after watching his recent video on the uh, Deus Ex Human Revolution, I just sat there thinking, Yep, he's right. I'm going to start firing up the original game again. I, I might even play through Invisible War. That's obviously a joke because no one should play through Invisible War. Um, but still, before I did, I started thinking about Mankind Divided, the sequel to Human Revolution's reboot prequel thing that was going on, and actually noted that all of the issues that he's kind of addressing in that, they were kind of ironed out in the sequel. But while the combat definitely was tweaked so that it wasn't as relied upon as in the former title, and yes, the approach to level design was rehauled to make things feel more connected to the in-game world, and yes, in place of boss battles that were farmed out to another dev studio, there was just kind of won and it came at the end of the game. But, but, the issue is not the lack of boss battles per se, but the fact that the story just felt like it got going right as the battle hit our screens. And remember, it is the end boss. Now, a running joke within the Deus Ex community is that Mankind Divided attempted to eliminate downtime by cutting out a ton of chapters of its own story. As here, it definitely feels like you just go to the Alps to battle some bioterrorists, head to London, have a boss battle, declare war on the Illuminati, and then hit the showers. Quite literally, the most interesting point of the game is where Mankind Divided chose to end things. And with no sequel on the horizon, as Square Enix is clearly more interested in dividing mankind from their disposable income through microtransactions, it looks as if the Illuminati are calling this a win for themselves. And number one, PsyOps the Mindgate Conspiracy. So for those wee babies in the group who look with furrowed and sweaty, confused brow at the memory card slot from a PS2 and start going, bruh, what is this, bruh, 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 PsyOps the Mindgate Conspiracy came out before things like Fortnite and was, as we would call it, a brilliant title, or as uh, the current generation might uh, term it as, a game that totally slaps bra. Combining ragdoll physics with complete and utter psychic-powered chaos, PsyOps was a game that shed its military shooter vibes and aesthetic not two levels in, and only ever looked back to laugh at the slew of other brown palleted action games that were struggling to find a home. However, maybe PsyOps should have checked where it was going from time to time, as just as the action seemed to hit a high and the plot develop into something more intriguing, things stumbled and fell off into the abyss. In the closing moments, Nick is confronted by two attack helicopters, and it's suggested that an even bigger threat is going to emerge to tie all of the psychic shenanigans together. But the game just cuts to black with a classic sequel bait of To Be Continued. Now, it's one thing for a mega blockbuster like Halo 2 to pull this move, but here, in a much lesser known IP, it feels like a truly misguided move that seems to rob the player of a satisfying conclusion. It's such a shame as well, because the story, while definitely not going to be the sort of thing that goes on to win any awards, even though it weirdly was nominated for some, which is mind-blowing, it's definitely not boring. I mean, you've got psychic powers, evil government conspiracies, twins! Twins! One of them's evil, obviously. There's, there's a lot going on. None of it's great, but it's the best type of B-movie stuff. And it's a shame that we never got to see this series continue. Boo! And there we go, my friends. Those were eight video games that ended before they even got started. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comment section below. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. I told you at the beginning of this video that I had a big announcement for the Live and Let's Dice channel. If you don't know what that is, that is my board game channel where I do my streaming and tabletop gaming stuff, and especially Warhammer, which this announcement relates to. Now, 
I have been invited, along with the rest of the Live and Let's Dice boys, Mikey, Beanie and Lawson, we are going to an event in Warhammer World in Nottingham on the 7th of May to represent a bunch of content creators for the Horus Heresy launch event. And it would mean the world to me if you could support this by retweeting, telling people about it, or if you have the gumption, if you got the stuff, coming to see us live at the event where we can show you what we've been working on. I can't detail what it is I've been doing for this event at the moment, but trust me, it is spectacular. And it's something that I'm really, really happy to be included with. So please, if you can come to the event, 7th of May, 2022 in Nottingham here in the UK, come along, say hi, play and play a little Space Marines. Just walk around school, hey, bang, 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 bang. Or something like that. Depending on, what's, depending on what's going on. Anyway, yeah, thank you very much. Hope to see you there. It would mean the world to all of us. But yeah, that's been it for today's episode. Big love to James. Hope he's feeling better because he was feeling a bit sicky recently. So big love to him as well. And before I go, I do just want to say one thing. Sometimes in life, we can hit sort of checkpoints that make us feel like we're getting start, getting stopped just before we're getting started. And that can be really, really off-putting. But I promise you, my friend, you should never give up. If you truly believe that there is something that you've been put on this earth to do, to grow as a person, to do something special, then never give up on your goals and dreams, my friend. Look to others for friends, family, support people in the support industry because they care about you. They want you to do well and they'll help you achieve your goals no matter how long it takes. Just keep persevering, my friend. That is the message I want to leave you with today, all right? Big love from me to you. You are a massive ledge. Now go out there and smash it. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon.